Hello everybody, I'm meteorologist Brian Ivey from NeoWeather and we're going to be chatting about the Old Farmer's Almanac and the regular Farmer's Almanac. How do they come up with these long range forecasts for winter time? Are they actually any accurate? Are they something that you can actually trust to kind of plan month by month or even week by week or day by day on? Because they get pretty specific sometimes with their forecasts. So let's start off by looking at the Old Farmer's Almanac here. Notice a trend, big snow across the Eastern Rockies into the Western Plains, but then after that weren't wet. Ooh, you don't think of Minneapolis, St. Paul and Fargo and whatnot being more wet than white. So that indicates it's gonna be fairly warm across much of the South here. Yeah, I should say the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, you're not even getting that far south, but especially once you dip down south and not a very active pattern here as well. So awesome to be in Florida. Sheets of sleet, not looking at a bunch of big snowstorms for the Mid-Atlantic, but notice if you go far north, there you go with some big snow. That's just because your average temperatures are so cold, it really takes a big push of warm air to make for more rain than snow there. Now out west, it's going to be generally pretty active across portions of the Four Corners into the Rockies, cool and dry, and then hey, very wet active pattern across portions of the Pacific Northwest, probably a decent amount of warm air due to some warm ocean temperatures, according to that forecast. The Farmer's Almanac, not the same. Look at it here. We do have a lot of warm, I should say very cold air that's gonna be transcending across a great deal of the country, even far south, and where there's an active pattern across the north, that means a lot more snow and ice chances according to that model. It has the exact opposite in a lot of spots, much more mild and dry across portions of the east. My goodness, so how do they come up with these forecasts? Well, they're using multiple different things here. Sunspots and moon phases. And each one of these, they're competitors, so they have a little bit different way of doing things. Prevailing climate cycles and weather folklore. So you're looking at different types of patterns in the ocean and the atmosphere and different types of repeating trends. And weather folklore, we don't know exactly what type they look at, but they do mention that they look into that. Could it be like acorn size or woolly bears, something like that? don't fully know. They don't release that information. They have other proprietary formulas and algorithms that they use to devise these forecasts as well. It's based off of atmospherics, climatology, meteorology, and then a lot of different solar system related things plus some folklore. So the accuracy when it comes down to it, we have to question a lot because we don't know exactly how they come up with it. And this was actually put to the test last year their forecast versus the actual conditions across a portion of the country, they did not do very well. Lots of actual fails, not even an okay forecast. That was the farmers and the old farmers, pretty much the same deal. Many different forecasts that they made and when you compare them, it didn't turn out to be too good. It's not like they're horrible. They had a couple that they got right, but only 25% of the time for both of these. So significantly worse than a flip of a coin. And when you're looking at a meteorologist's long range forecast, no, it's not as good as a forecast for the next day or seven days, but it is above 50% accuracy. So there's a big, big level of accuracy uh, difference between a real meteorologist forecast and some of these almanacs. So what are some of the pattern drivers we're looking at for the winter time? Very warm, very warm water temperatures and air conditions across the Pacific and across much of the Atlantic as well. And notice this big area of blue hair that is well below average water temperatures in the Pacific Equatorial Ocean. So that's a La Nina that is already built in and that will be with us as we go throughout winter time. This is the dip here. This is La Nina conditions, even getting into moderate La Nina conditions possible for the winter. And through the spring, we're gonna stay in La Nina conditions. You can notice that blue coloring there again in the Eastern Equatorial Pacific Ocean. So when you put it all together, and there's some more factors that we look at too, this is our very early preliminary look of the winter forecast. We're gonna have the cold confined to this area right here across much of the Northern Plains, upper Midwest. It will descend at times into the Midwest and Great Lakes and Ohio Valley, but probably more so this warm air descending further off towards the northwest. It will be a very mild time of it for the south and for much of the east as well as we look right now. Of course, we'll have many more updates with winter forecast analysis as we go ahead over the next couple of months or so. Thank you very much for watching and remember to uh, like and follow us here at NeoWeather.